Okay, what we have here is a Rotax 447 engine, which uh, I've got on a ultralight Titan, which is mostly a business venture. Uh, I intend to fix this plane up. I'm not going to make it perfect, but I want to make it uh, safe and uh, a saleable plane. Maybe fly it around a little bit, have a little fun with it. Uh, this engine, uh, as far as I know, the previous owner told me he was having some problems with uh, the engine not picking up load correctly, which in my opinion is probably going to be something to do with the uh, carburetor here. Uh, possibly uh, the mid-range jets, uh, idle jet could be plugged up. Those are some pretty small holes. So I'm going to go through the carburetor on it. I'm going to take the cylinders off here uh, to check to make sure the rings are free. This engine is unknown hours. I know the guy flew it to New York and different states he flew to. He did take some pretty long trips in the thing, so it, it undoubtedly has some hours on it. So I'm going to look at that and see what kind of condition it's in. But being as the plane doesn't seem to have an hour meter on it, I really don't know for sure how much it's been run. Uh, it is single ignition. It's a 447, so there's certain things I'm going to do to it uh, that I know that can be a problem. It has uh, these wires here uh, would be for your cylinder head temperature, which would be the little uh, sending units or underneath the spark plugs. So we'll be taking those off there. Uh, it has a EGT gauges on here in the manifold. The muffler and so forth is rusty, so I've got to fix that because I think it would look a lot better, although the rust doesn't hurt anything, and I'm not too big a one on looks. doesn't matter that much to me, but I think uh, if it didn't look rusty, it would be better, especially if I want to ever sell this thing. Uh, the one thing I do see wrong here are these springs. You'll notice the spring is touching here. It's touching. So these these loops here that the exhaust springs are hooked to, I'm going to bend those back. I'm going to put stainless steel springs on so they don't break. You can see how rusty these exhaust springs are, so they would be a real candidate for breaking anyway. So I think I'll, I'll do something about these springs so that they don't touch anything. Uh, the only other thing I know about it that was told to me was... Uh, that the gearbox leaks, and I, I see it does. There's always a little trace of uh, uh, gear oil coming out of this B gearbox. So, in fact, there you can see some on my hand under there. It's oily. So I'm going to see if I can figure out where that leak's coming from. Could be a seal in here, but my guess is it maybe is the gasket or the, the drain plug or something under there is leaking. Because it does seem to leak even when it's not running. It's it gets wet with oil all the time, so I'm going to take a look at that. But other than that, that's all I know about it. Uh, certain things I'm going to to be changing. Uh, I think the way he has his uh, fuel pump mounted here is very good. It's short pulse line, and it also, although this line should be changed to the thicker wall line but what he has in there has got a nylon braided hose so that's a pretty strong line that would be all right I think on there but uh, it's short and if any oil got in there it can run back into the crankcase and that's one thing that I always look for is the the fuel pump line so other than that I think it's pretty good even a carb socket don't look too bad although it is old uh, but uh, other than that, it'll be taking the cylinders off and uh, paint, probably paint the air shrouds and, you know, just check the thing to make sure the rings are free and uh, not stuck. Just do a regular decarbon on it and measure it to see if it's been over revved, if there's any damage to any bearings or anything like that in there. So that's what this project's going to be. And these little ears back, all you have to do is heat this ear up red hot and then grab it with pliers or something. That one was really, really not in the right position. If you 
get it glowing red. You might be able to do it with a map gas torch. I'm using a settle in here, but but you got to get those bent back to where the spring's not going to rub on the exhaust pipe. So I usually heat them. A lot of them have been welded wrong on here. You, this one was really bad. It was almost you could hardly even get the spring in there. It was so so tight. But just heat them up red hot. They'll bend real easy. That's all there is to it. Okay. Now that I've got these little mounting ears were for the springs, these little loops bent back. Now I'm ready to sandblast. It's still a little bit hot, but I'm going to stuff a rag in here so sand doesn't get in the muffler because I found that's that's not a very good idea to get sand in there because it does come out and then when it comes out it kind of sandblasts your prop. So cork that up and I'll cork up the other end of the muffler and uh, then it's ready to, to blast and paint. Okay, I thought I'd better show you. I hope this camera can focus on this, but uh, both of these EGT probes aren't any good. You'll notice a little hole here in the end. You'll see just the end of the wire <clears throat> and the wire is no longer uh, silver soldered. I'm not sure how they put them together. I imagine with silver solder or something like that. It's got to get pretty hot. But uh, the wire in the center is no longer connected to that and that's an indication of a bad EGT probe and that thing should be replaced. Uh, also they're pretty rusty as you can see so I think I think it's time to get some new ones of these for this thing. Uh, I wish I knew how many hours this had on it, but I would say that this engine's been run quite a bit if those probes are wore out like that. I don't know whether the solder disappears, they get them too hot, I, I can't tell you what causes them to fail, but I know they do and they can be kind of intermittent where they don't rewrite and then all of a sudden they do they give you kind of, you know, as the heat the heat changes the end here, it, it uh, it can make connection and then not have a connection and so it can kind of drive you crazy but uh, I'm going to buy new EGT probes for this thing. Okay, found something else that looks like it's pretty bad on this thing and needs attention. That would be this cooling fan belt. This is this is way too loose for that belt. I don't know if you can see how much that belt's moving there but that is way too loose therefore that engine isn't being cooled right. Uh, centrifugal force will make the belt expand when it's turning 10 grand like this fan is and the centrifugal force will make the belt come up out of the sheaves and even though it doesn't take much to turn this fan it can slip if you let the belt get that loose. Uh, the belts are adjusted by removing shims in here that allow the two sheaves of the belt uh, or the pulley to move together and that tensions the, the belt. Uh, also I'm going to have to check the points on this thing because this engine's probably got enough hours. The points last a really long time on these things but it may need to be reset and we'll have to check the timing and everything on it. So we'll do that too. Okay I wanted to comment about the plugs on this engine. Uh, you can see that uh, this is using what they call a fine wire plug which is the best thing to use if you only got single ignition like a Rotax 447 has. Uh, it has a very small center electrode uh, usually made out of platinum and uh, these plugs just don't foul. You'll find that you have almost no chance of fouling a plug if you're using these fine wire plugs. They're really good this particular one in this instance uh, the color of the insulator tells me and, and also the the metal around the outside uh, the shell here uh, it looks very oily you can see he's using uh, probably a little bit too much oil in his mix here uh, the engine's supposed to run at 50 to 1 but uh, he was using some kind of special oil that's supposed to run a hundred to one. I think it's just a really thick oil. 
and it's a good two-stroke oil, but I think he ought to mix it 100 to 1. I don't, I don't think doing less than that's uh, a good idea. It's, uh, it's putting a little bit too much uh, oily carbon on everything. And, you know, I'm used to using the Penn's oil, uh, which you can get at Walmart and every place else. But uh, the coloring on his insulator, it makes it a little bit hard to read this plug because it, it's been burning so much oil. It's a little hard to tell if it was running too rich or, or just oily. But uh, because of the shell, the condition of that shell, I'm going to say it's, it's running too much oil. It's, it's, it's too oily. Uh, he's he's really heavy on his oil and it is kind of a two-stroke oil I'm not familiar with so anyways there's a a good example of what a a plug uh, with too much oil would look like the the center insulator there the ceramic portion should be kind of a tan color that that's ideal if you can get it looking like that then you know your mixtures right and your oil mix is right and everything else but this one uh, this one definitely seems like it's it's running too too rich on the oil. I mean, this isn't an inverted engine either. It's setting up right, so so I'd say that's way too much oil on that. It shouldn't be in that condition. Okay. The good news is I have found a hour meter on this Titan. It was in the middle of the of the uh, tachometer. Real small, little tiny numbers, but. There is a uh, hour meter, so it has 181 hours on it. So I check, I'm checking the small end bearings this way. And I do that with the micrometer. And I get 867 thousandths that way. And then I check it this way with a telescope gauge, and it should be round, it should be the same which yeah 867 it is so we're good on that so I'll be ready now to uh, put the wrist pins back in uh, usually these are just a thumb press in the piston uh, this particular engine has caged needle bearings uh, so that tells me it's an early engine later they went to cageless bearings which it'll be a whole bunch of needles just fall out and you need a special tool to put that together this one you can assemble this without any special tools at all if it's got cageless bearings or I mean caged bearings the cageless ones you need a tool for uh, the pistons I've decarboned those soaked them in uh, carb cleaner dipping solvent and uh, uh, you might wonder uh, how I can tell which one goes where. I leave this uh, wrist pin snap ring I leave in on this side because it's pretty hard to get out anyways with this and I don't want to take this plate off just for a decarbon job so I leave it in that tells me that this is the, the mag side piston so it goes this way and of course your uh, ring uh, gaps will all go on this, this side here of the engine uh, I've got the, the heads all polished up here. Uh, and the pistons are ready to go back in. The rings are nice and free. And you know, you got to have the rings so they slide around like that, especially that second ring. That's the one that's most likely to stick. The, the top one will go a long time without sticking. But the, and the second one's what gets rid of the heat. You'll notice there's a lot more tension on the second ring. Uh, the ring gap is wider here than it is on the top one. The top one seals by the pressure of the gases, hold that tight, but the heat goes out through the second ring, so it's important that that be working. Uh, other than that, uh, I don't have too much more news on this thing, but that's the way it stands right now, and uh, I think I'm ready to put the cylinders back on there. Uh, shouldn't be any problem doing that.